Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this edition of Creative Cows Video Adrenaline for Adobe Premiere Pro. Today, I'm going to show you a graphics tip for quickly making your own customized backgrounds. Now, a lot of you have extensive collections of stock backgrounds, or maybe you have some of your own that you've made through the years. I'm going to show you how you can remix those right inside the Premiere Pro timeline to get a new look. Combine them, colorize it, get something completely different without having to jump out and go to After Effects or go buy something new. Let's take a look. I've got a couple of clips here, and these were all actually shot myself. I just used, in this case, a bunch of pennies on a turntable, shot it with my DSLR out of focus. This was just a bunch of little stones on the same turntable, literally the types of stones you put in an aquarium. And here we just have uh, a bunch of paper clips on the same thing. Well, I'm going to drop those into a new sequence. Let's just lasso those and drag them on the new icon there, and it makes a new sequence. And we'll just rename that sequence New Background. Now, all three of these are very different from one another, completely different colors, different speeds of motion, but we can mix them together quite smoothly. I'm going to take this clip and drop it on top, and I want to mix these two layers together. So if I grab that there, we can go ahead and start to finesse a little bit. Let's first shorten this so they're all the same length. And you'll see there that it snaps into place. If that snapping's not occurring, you go ahead and check the little magnet here, and then it's doing free drag. But snapping is usually useful when you're trying to line things up quick, like we did there. So I've got that clip selected, and I'm going to go up here to the effect controls and twirl down opacity. And what you see are blend modes. Now, those of you who are Photoshop or After Effects users know that blend modes are the secret sauce that all designers harness to get results quickly. Blend modes let you mix two layers together based on their values. Typically, the brightness or the shadowy areas or the color values of one layer mixed with another. And as you experiment, they quickly combine. Now, you'll see that these are logically grouped. We've got all the ones that darken together followed by a group of ones that lighten, a group that mixes them together or overlay, and then some specialty ones towards the bottom. So you see here if I choose multiply, things get a little bit darker. Or we can go the opposite way and say screen, and they get brighter. So pretty simple stuff. And what I typically recommend is find one you like. I'm a big fan of soft light. And then you can always tweak it using the opacity slider to back things off a bit. That looks pretty good. Let's just take this next clip and bring it over. Drop it on top as well. We'll shorten it. There we go. It's selected. And I'm going to twirl that down and look at the opacity here. And let's try overlay. That's looking pretty good. I could press play here. And we see that they all play together in real time. That's one of the cool things about Premiere Pro. Even After Effects can't do blending modes in real time, but Premiere Pro CS5 can which is really pretty cool. Let's you experiment with those designs. If you want to pull some of the color out, you can go on over to the effects here, twirl down video effects, and go into your color correction. And basically, we're going to do color balance here. I could drop that on and just strip out the saturation. There we go. And that mixes it together. So, worked out nicely. Let's try screen for a moment. That's a little bright. How about overlay? That looks good. Now, we've combined all these backgrounds together, and it's great, except it's the wrong color that my client wants. They're sitting over the shoulder, and they're going, blue. My logo's blue. I want a blue background. Well, it seems like clients are always drawn to the color blue, but you can have any color you want as long as you sort of collapse these or group them together. Here's how that works. I'm going to select all three clips, and I'm just going to go ahead and nest that. I'll choose Clip, Nest. And you see that those drop into one box. It puts it down into a single track. It's really like a sequence inside of a sequence. And now you can do whatever you want to colorize it. So we can come on over here and just drop a color balance effect on that. And you see you can roll the hue to any color you need. There's that blue that they seem to want. Back off the saturation a little bit, tweak the lightness or the brightness. And as I play that there, you see I've got the new color that I've asked for. 
If you don't want to roll the hue, there's even other ways to colorize things. We can go ahead and remove that effect and take advantage of things like change to color. And this lets you remap color. So I could say take everything that's yellow and remap it to more of this bluer color here. You see it starts to push it. We could adjust the softness there and the tolerance settings and say, you know what, be more tolerant. And that's a nice remap, more of a tint. I like using that effect. Now, by design, you normally wouldn't put the tolerance so high, but in this case, it did a really nice job of just rolling the colors to that new color without getting too harsh. And that's what's great. Instead of having to go out and buy something new, you could take the existing materials you have, remix them right in the timeline of Premiere Pro, and get a completely new result. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode. My name's Rich Harrington, and I invite you to head on over to creativecow.net, where you should check out the great Adobe Premiere Pro forum, as well as a ton of other video tutorials and articles all about how you can get more done with Adobe Premiere Pro. Thanks again.